when you meditate, you're supposed to come into the present moment, drop all reference to the future or the past. But some futures and some pasts are easier to drop than others. Even if you can drop them for the time that you're in the meditation, you've got to come back and live with them when you come out of meditation. It's all issue of the narratives of our lives, the stories we tell ourselves. If we could just drop them and be done with them, life would be awfully easy. Meditation would be easy. But some of the narratives are easier to drop than others. And it's one of the basic principles in the Buddhist teachings that there's so, a lot of things that you have to learn how to drop, that before you can drop them, you have to learn to do them skillfully. And the stories you tell yourself about your life, those are one of the things you have to learn how to do skillfully. Because otherwise you can come out of a really nice, peaceful meditation, and there's the same old rotten story all over again. And you find yourself relating to it and getting tied up in those stories again and again and again. So oftentimes a good part of the meditation is not just being with the breath, but if you find that you've got a, a story that keeps obsessing the mind, stirs up greed, anger, delusion, fear, whatever, you've got to learn how to deal with it. Learn how to tell yourself new stories. Learn a corrective to the old stories. And one of the basic ways of doing this is reflecting on that chant we had just now. And Goodwill, compassion, appreciation, and equanimity. Trying to develop these four attitudes with regard to those stories. So that you can tell yourself new stories that then are easier to let go of in a very in a very liberating way. In other words, you don't throw them down. You weave a new story, and then you get to the point where it's time in that story just to settle down and meditate. And the story leaves you alone. When you come back out of meditation, the story is still there, and it's not a story that's going to get you worked up, because it's been refashioned. You learn to get more and more skillful at the way you tell stories in the mind, starting out with an attitude of goodwill. First, goodwill for yourself. You realize that if you sit there and keep telling yourself these bad stories over and over again. You're going to suffer. Do you want yourself to suffer? Well, no. Do you want other people to suffer? Well, maybe. You think about people who've done things to you, been wronged you. You have to add, you ask yourself, well, what, what are you going to get out of their suffering? You don't benefit in any way from their suffering. And the fact that you're sitting there wishing suffering on them is just going to get in the way of your meditation. And so what you want is a story for yourself that ends up with your being happy and their being happy. That's your wish. That's the basic foundation of all the rest of the attitudes. Now in some cases you see where cases where people are actually harming themselves, harming you, harming others. And that's why you requires compassion. Think about it. you really wish that they could stop. And of course the same thing applies to you when you're harming yourself and what you wish you could stop causing that harm. It would be good that that harm not be caused. It would be good if those people not suffer. Remind yourself of that attitude. Appreciation, you remind yourself of your goodness, the goodness of other people. The things you've done that make you deserve to be happy. The things other people have done that deserve that they be happy. You're not jealous and you don't downplay their good points. And then finally, equanimity. When you realize there are some things that are just beyond your control, no matter how much you have goodwill for other people, no matter how much you feel compassion, appreciation, there are some things that are just totally beyond what you can do, what you can handle, what you can change. Number one, the past cannot be changed. You have to develop equanimity towards the past. And look at what the Buddha has you develop. think about when you're developing equanimity, the whole principle of karma. What's old karma is old karma and cannot be undone. What's important is your new karma that you're doing right now. 
Now that can affect some things, but there are some things that are beyond the power of that new karma, largely through the continuing influence of old karma. You've got to think about that and learn how to develop equanimity in cases where equanimity is appropriate. The Buddha isn't saying that equanimity is better than the other three. It's just you learn how to which situations to apply which feeling to. What situations require equanimity, which ones require appreciation, goodwill, which ones require equanimity, compassion. So you look at the stories you're telling yourself and try to inject these attitudes in there, particularly the teaching on karma. As we said this afternoon, there's no wrong that goes unpunished, there's no good that goes unrewarded. That's simply the way karma is. And therefore, we don't have to carry around ledger sheets saying, this person did that and that person did this, and with the fear that if the ledger sheet disappears, then that person is not going to get the retribution they, they deserve. The principle of karma takes care of that. But remember, it also takes care of that with you as well. So you want to look at what kind of attitudes you're fostering in your mind and make sure that they're skillful ones. Because when the whole issue of karma finally boils down to it, it's what you do right now is important. What was done in the past may have some influence on what you can do right now. And so when bad things come, you accept them. Well, that's a, a result of past karma. But if you realize you're doing bad karma in the present as well, okay, then that's, that's something that you can't have equanimity for. You've got to change it. You can do your best in whatever the situation is. Confident that, that it'll work out. If you keep on doing and saying and thinking skillful things, then the results are going to have to be good. So no matter how bad the situation is, okay, your hope right here is what you're doing right here, right now. And the more you think about this, the more it brings the mind into the present moment. And that's when it's ready to meditate. And so when you look at whatever satisfaction you get out of unskillful storytelling, you realize that that's pretty miserable satisfaction. It's nothing you really want. It's nothing that stands up to any kind of real scrutiny. And you find it easier to let go. You've got these other attitudes that will bring you into the present moment in a way that you can feel good about yourself. You're not allowing yourself to be victimized. At the same time, you're not wishing ill on anybody. You do what can be done, given the situation. And when the time comes that the mind needs a rest, the mind needs to settle down, okay, that's what should be done right now. That's the best thing you can do right now. And that way the narrative leads you into the present moment. If you look at in the Buddhist text, when the Buddha talks about the past, some of them go way back many aeons, cycles of the universe describing how this happens, how that happens, where this came from, what that came from. Long stories about past lives or cycles of lives. But they all end up by saying, okay, the basic principle that shapes this and is going to shape the future, it's the principle of karma. And where is karma being made right now? Well, right here, right now. So focus right here. Same with all the cosmologies, when the Buddha describes the different levels of being. It all comes to where do these levels of being come from? They come from the mind right here, right now, what the mind does. So whatever the narratives are, when you, when you tell them skillfully, they bring you back to the present moment. So try to learn how to be a good storyteller, telling yourself the right stories, stories that will bring you into the present with a sense of confidence in your own abilities with a sense of well-being, that no matter what the stories are out there, no matter what other people have done, no matter what you've done, there's a way of looking at it that you can put the mind at rest. And to try to find that way. This is what all the teachings on karma, all the teachings on the sublime attitudes are all about, is to weave new stories in the mind, new stories that come together right here enable you to stay right here with a sense of well-being, clarity, concentration, mindfulness, discernment. 
without anything tugging you back or into the past or pulling you into the future. You're able to just be right here, right now, aware right here, right now, healing the mind right here, right now. And that's how you use your the mind's story-telling ability to bring it to a point where it can just stop telling stories. And just look at what you've got. Learn to be skillful with what you've got right here, right now. Because that's what the Buddhist teachings all come down to, is this principle of skillfulness. How skillfully can you relate to the different things going on in your mind? For your own well-being, for the well-being of others around you. It's not that you're cutting off any mental faculties. The mind has to tell stories. Even arahants can tell stories, can reflect on the past, can plan for the future. But it's just they've learned to do it in a way that doesn't cause any suffering. And it's not just from bringing their mind into the present moment, but it also comes from reflecting on things in a way, using the Buddha's teachings as proper tools. So that all the ways the mind relates to itself in terms of past, future, narratives, stories, worldviews, cosmologies, all your views, that they all become skillful and are no longer a cause for suffering. So think of the practice as an all-around process of training the mind, not just getting it very skillful in noting or getting it very skillful in being with the breath, but very skillful in all that it does. As John Fuhr once said to me when I went back to reordain, he says, being a meditator means you've got to be skillful at everything, not just sitting here with your eyes closed. In other words, you approach everything as a challenge. What's the most skillful way of dealing with this? What's the most skillful way of dealing with that? When you have that attitude, then when you've developed it and trained it in your daily life, and when you come to the meditation, things go a lot easier. <laughs>